For many fight fans, Evander Holyfield defined an era of heavyweight boxing. There was a time when you could even argue that the real deal was the best heavyweight of an era that included many greats, including Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, and Mike Tyson. But, unfortunately, many fight fans will not remember Holyfield for what he was, a man with tremendous heart, grit, and determination. They won't remember a fighter who constantly defied the odds and did his best when everyone counted him out. Today, I will tell you about precisely such a fight when Holyfield decided to risk it all and conquer the heavyweight division. About the bout that was dubbed the heavyweight fight of the decade. About the bout that changed the destiny of Evander Holyfield, elevated him to new heights, and turned him into the perfect fighter. About a bout consisting of 10 grueling rounds when fighters exchanged fierce blows. We'll talk about the brutal confrontation between Evander Holyfield and Michael Dokes. If you saw it, you'll never forget it. If you haven't, watch it. It was beautiful. By the way, don't forget to give this video a like. Thanks. Round one scheduled for 12 for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. But Holyfield on April 9, 1988, Evander Holyfield knocked out Carlos de Leon in the eighth round, securing the status of the undisputed world champion in the cruiserweight division. Undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. After his bout with de Leon, Holyfield's team decided to vacate the titles. The undisputed cruiserweight champion set his sights on conquering the heavyweight division for a showdown with the reigning hegemon, Mike Tyson. Holyfield wasn't a natural heavyweight. To prepare for the move up, he assembled a team of specialists who, through coordinated effort, transformed him into the perfect fighter. He gained muscle mass while retaining his speed and functional qualities. He had defeated both James Tillis and Pink Lawn Thomas in his first two, and only, heavyweight fights. His goals were simple. Win, continue to win, and challenge the undisputed heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. On March 11th, 1989, Evander Holyfield faced his toughest challenge in the heavyweight division at that time against former WBA title holder Michael Dynamite Dokes at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State. The WBA rules in effect for the fight. Ten oh, yeah. and he lashes the left hook and a stiff jab to the face of Mike Weaver. Ten ounce gloves. WBA uses them, 10 outs, and they open up big. Here's Michael Dokes coming out with a big flurry, and he... Six years earlier, Dokes stopped Mike Weaver in a highly controversial bout to become the WBA heavyweight champion. WBA, and the fight has been stopped! Unfortunately, his reign proved brief. Dokes surrendered his title two fights later against Jerry Cutsey. The champion, beautiful. <laughs> Making it a bit obvious to <laughs> But a few of the chances and the big and it's Kutsir who's coming up. Getty Kutsir in his third challenge for the challenge. And in the intervening years before meeting Holyfield, he struggled with his addictions to cocaine and alcohol. Before 1988, he rarely stepped into the boxing ring. He became forgotten. Even when he was a champion, the public didn't show much interest in him. Michael was inconsistent, often alternating successful performances with outright failures. Furthermore, he struggled with excess weight. However, Dokes made a comeback in 1988. He got in shape and managed to secure seven consecutive victories. In his final fight, he won the WBC Continental title. Nobody had any interest in seeing him in the same ring with Tyson. 
it was a different story with Holyfield. I don't think I'm gonna have to look for Vander, and, and Vander is definitely not gonna have to look for me, and it's not about a filling out process or anything like that, because we can do that after the fight. We can kiss and hug and all of that, and congratulate one another, but then first, first second of that fight, uh, we're gonna be right there in the danger zone. As you will see in a moment, as Holyfield will make his way to the ring before- Michael was 32 years old, for years senior to Evander, his prospects for the upcoming fight were considered quite low. He was perceived as a stepping stone for the young and motivated Holyfield. However, doubts regarding Holyfield's ability to battle with bigger and stronger fighters persisted. But after facing Dokes, these suspicions quickly vanished. Michael Dokes, I'm not going to let you stop me or anybody else. Vanna, this is guerrilla warfare. On March 11th, the electricity could be felt throughout Caesars and to those watching at home. From the opening bell, Dokes charged right at Holyfield. The game plan was to attack the smaller man's body and break his opponent down. Holyfield fired back and looked to make Dokes expend energy early and wear him down as the fight went on. After two rounds of banging to the Holyfield body, Dokes began launching missiles to the head in round three. Holyfield blazed back with combinations and power punches. Both men refused to give an inch of ground and continuously pounded with heavy artillery. As the two traded, Dokes blistered Holyfield's jaw and began backing him up. The crowd rose to its feet and stood the entire round. Dokes showed dog determination to prove he was back and could take out an elite competitor like Holyfield. The incredible pace continued into round five as Dokes again backed Holyfield up and hammered him into the ropes. Holyfield spun Dokes around and returned fire, landing left hooks and right crosses to Dokes' face to end the fifth. Looking to set the record straight, Holyfield charged at Dokes to begin round six. The two continued to stand toe to toe in the center of the ring as Holyfield plastered a right hand to the Dokes chin. The action continued after the bell sounded to end the round. Now cut over his left eye, and undaunted Dokes kept coming. Holyfield, bouncing on his toes and resilient in his own right, kept firing back.
Holyfield ejected Doak's mouthpiece with a left hook as the crowd moaned and groaned with so many of the punches. The thing about these punches is that Holyfield is putting his whole body... As round seven came down the stretch, Holyfield reached back and pounded a major league right hand to Doak's cheek. As you see the blood as Holyfield came right in. Doak's remains on his feet. I don't know how. Dokes began round eight like Holyfield began round six, charging at his opponent with renewed vigor. The furious back and forth action continued as both men took turns pounding away. Dokes owned the first half of the round while Holyfield then took possession of the second half. Both men had a truckload of guts and chins made of concrete. Moving into round 10, the effects were beginning to show on both fighters. Dokes continued to bleed while Holyfield was beginning to swell around his eyes. The two moved back to close quarters as Holyfield launched a half left hook, half uppercut. The punch blistered Doak's jaw while straightening his back and buckling his legs. Holyfield moved in for the kill while Dokes tried to hold his ground and fire back. Holyfield then fired a short, crisp left hook that sent Dokes reeling into the ropes. As his body bounced off the ropes, Holyfield fired a right cross that landed flush on the side of his foe's head, sending Dokes crashing to the canvas. Watch this shot. That is just absolutely a beautiful hook. The effects have been building up all night long as Holyfield rained punch after punch on the floor. And there it goes into the ropes. Holyfield looks to finish him off. Brandon Hale steps in and Dokes coming towards us. He's down. Holyfield ended the affair, an instant classic, at 1.41 of round 10. The crowd, still standing, applauded for several minutes. The Ring magazine would later name this fight the best heavyweight fight of the 1980s. It is one of the best fights I have ever seen and was privileged to watch. The action, heart and courage displayed by both men spoke for itself. In just a few years' time, Dokes would be shellacked by Razor Ruddock, then wiped out by Bo. Shot and overweight, his career would end in anonymity in Erlanger, Kentucky. Later there would be infamy, after his conviction in 1998 on charges of sexual assault. He would die of liver cancer in 2012, at the age of 54. Evander Holyfield still had a lot ahead of him, but that's a completely different story.